Let's go, team. Woo! This is not as pretty as when he did it. Oh, I almost cut my finger, no, but it's fine. No. This looks so ugly. Give it right. stretch. Oh. You can stretch it opposite. It's so <laughs> off-putting. <laughs> Hey Tampa Bay, we're back with another Unation Tries and today we are at Roca speaking with Andrew, the general manager, and we are so excited. Hey guys, Andrew Harris, general manager and sommelier at Roca uh, here in the Tampa Heights right across from Armature Works. Uh, today we are going to show you a little bit about our mozzarella cart. I have two of my best staff members, Connor and Caitlin, who are going to demonstrate how they make the mozzarella cart every single night uh, here tableside at Roca, and then also give these two lovely ladies a chance to do it themselves. They're going to be pulling their own mozzarella, slicing their own tomatoes, and putting it on the plate all their own. What exactly is the mozzarella cart and how many times do people order it a night? Uh, so the mozzarella cart is a brainchild of our executive chef and managing partner Bryce Bonsack. Uh, he was working at a New York City uh, icon called Roberta's where every day they were stretching pounds and pounds of mozzarella for their pizza. He came up with the idea to turn this into a, a, a table side attraction and almost similar to a caprese salad, uh, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, basil that actually comes from his garden. Uh, but to stretch it table side and to have it warm is really the ultimate goal. Uh, on a, any given night, we've done as many as 50 or 55 mozzarellas uh, in one night. Uh, we only have about 19 tables, and sometimes out of 19 tables, we'll get 19 orders on, on a turn. Uh, so quite popular, and people really, really love it. What does the training process look like? How long does it usually take someone? Right. So our service assistants that are hired here uh, go through a process where they begin out as bussers, and then they go to food runners, and then they get lofted to the mozzarella cart. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes anywhere from two to three weeks for them to not only learn how to set up the mozzarella cart and break it down, which is the first step, but then they actually have to stretch mozzarella, which is all of our favorite night, because <laughs> when they're practicing, we get to eat it at the end of the night. Uh, they go through about four or five stretches in the dining room under the watchful eye of people like Connor and Caitlin and myself. Uh, and then of course the final training is they're gonna stretch a mozzarella and we take it back and Chef has to taste it. Oh. Uh, until they get that thumbs up from Chef, they're not allowed on the floor. Uh, but once they've gotten the thumbs up from Chef, then they officially become mozzarella car people and they can go out and stretch for tables. Wow. You should give them the Chef's kiss. <laughs> You're approved. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we have our work cut out for us, so we're excited to get started. Hello, my name is Connor Legault. I'm a pleasure to work here at Roca, and I'm actually a mozzarella trainer. I'm gonna be showing you guys what Madison and Stephanie are gonna be doing later on, okay? So first things first, these are our cow's milk cheese curds. We actually get them from a little farm up in southern New Jersey, and we love these curds. They can be stored a little bit colder than other curds. It's actually why we can make our mozzarella table side for y'all. There's also a little bit of kosher salt in the bowl. That salt won't add any salty flavor to your mozzarella whatsoever. It's actually just gonna help these curds make the flavor of mozzarella a lot faster. Now to begin to get the flavor out of these curds, all I'm doing right now is adding some very hot water. Um, we let our water sit at around 200 degrees, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna mix with that kosher salt. It's gonna run over these curds, and it kind of mimics melting. It's gonna create all of the mozzarella flavor, and it's gonna cause them to bond in a giant blob in the bottom of the bowl. Now, after about three minutes of sitting in this bowl, that blob's gonna have all the flavor of mozzarella, but if you were to eat it, it would still taste like milk and salt. And the reason for that is until you stretch mozzarella, you don't really taste the flavor of mozzarella. It's how you're gonna release it. So what I'm grabbing for y'all right now is some heirloom tomatoes. Um, we actually exclusively use heirloom tomatoes with our mozzarella cart. And we do that for a couple of reasons. Heirloom tomatoes come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. That's gonna give the mozzarella a very unique flavor because the lighter the tomato, the more sugar that's in the tomato. Now, mozzarella loves these big red heirloom tomatoes because they're actually the perfect opposite acidity for mozzarella. So they literally make this cheese taste better than any other tomato can in the entire world. All right, so now I'm just gathering up all those curds, getting them nice and tight. That way when I stretch, they don't all try to jump ship here. So those are those blob that I was talking about earlier. If you were to eat this, it would still taste like milk and salt, unfortunately. Not gonna be mozzarella yet. Now you're gonna start tasting that mozzarella flavor. Um, every stretch of this mozzarella is actually gonna keep releasing flavor until eventually there's not any flavor for the mozzarella curds to release. And at that point, you'll see the cheese will literally just stop stretching. Kind of looks like a resistance band. It gets very tense. You can see that tension starting to build up. That's how I know we're starting to dial in here. Match your mozzarella cheese, just like that. Okay. 
Mozzarella doesn't take any technique whatsoever. It's all feel. You just feel when the tea starts to stiffen up. That's how you know you're done. You can stretch it any way you want. Sideways, diagonal, upside down, behind your back. As long as it stretches, it's mozzarella teas. So now I'm gonna be adding in a little bit of Malden sea salt. We absolutely adore this salt. We actually use it in the butter for our bread as well. The reason why we do so is it goes really well with acidic foods. It really makes their juices pop, makes their flavor really come out well. Next, we need some black pepper. Fortunately, this is just some plain old black pepper, no backstory. It's where everybody tries to guess and they're wrong. We actually use a Spanish olive oil instead of an Italian olive oil. And the reason why we do so is the Spanish olive oil has a beautifully strong flavor on the front with a nice gentle spicy finish on the back end. That's gonna pair very well with this 10 year old balsamic that we get from straight from Modena, Italy. Um, because of how long this balsamic is aged for, it gets a very dominant flavor that when you pair it with Italian olive oil, it just doesn't quite do it justice. But with a little bit of spice and a little bit of sweetness from the balsamic, we use some basil. Finish up this mozzarella for you. Hi, I'm Caitlin Gosney. I've been at Roca for about two years, and I'm going to be the one showing Stephanie and Madison how to stretch mozzarella tonight. Let's go, team. Woo! <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Grab your waters. You want to cover the cards with the hot water so that everything has a chance to melt. Oh, and that's perfect man. the way that you're kind of distributing the hot water so that it hits all of the curds evenly. That's exactly what you're going for. When you're picking your tomatoes, the way that you want to go for it is you're looking for something that's not overly firm, but it doesn't feel like it's going to completely disintegrate when you cut into it. Okay. You're looking for very nice, soft. I got one of this one. Yeah, this Gives me an outline of where to cut. It's true. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> has like lines to cut it for. So to take out the core, you kind of want to insert the knife at a little bit of an angle and just slice it around in a circle until you get that out. I can't believe I've been cutting tomatoes wrong my whole life. <laughs> but it looks like you didn't cut it at quite as much as the angle as you needed. Yep, it definitely. Rookie. A rookie at Roca. Kind of use the knife to scoop it up out. It's not as pretty as when he did it. Okay. Perfect. This is doing amazing. This is the best first month I've ever seen. Wow. You heard that here first, folks. We're not done yet, though. There's yeah. still. <laughs> oh no, I almost cut my finger. That one's mine. So now you can just move all of your slices over to the plate. If there's oh. any kind of beautiful arrangement you want to mm. put them in. Oh, yeah. Let's get creative. A lot of us here with sneak a little flower pattern in there. I did not make them even, but it's abstract. To one and a half of so our heirloom hard. tomatoes. Be enough tomato to go with it. Okay, it's not pretty, but it's yummy. I think it's beautiful. What? I love you. <laughs> All Caitlin's are so nice. Perfect. So let's go ahead and cut up some baby heirlooms for our garnish for the top. I like to get a variety of colors for the baby tomatoes. I put them on top, so it just adds a lovely little pop of color once you're finished. You do want to make sure that they are also going to be ripe, so not too firm, just a little bit soft. This is too firm. I would say just a little bit, but if you really want to use the green one, you can <laughs> eat that tomato. <laughs> it's okay. I'll let it. I'll let it live a little longer. And so for the basil, you are looking for firm, beautiful leaves, no browning on them. That is your goal for the basil. They're all so pretty. How do you decide? My basil plant from Trader Joe's never looks like this. It also dies like after a week, but. Totally up to you in the size and. Let's go big. So now you can go ahead and go back in your drawer. You will find some big heavy duty black gloves. Those are gonna protect you from the water. Go ahead and put those on. I feel like these look like from the Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and put your hands in the water. Oh, I got one finger. I'm scared it's going to be a little toasty. Nope. I don't feel anything. You don't feel anything through the glass. No. They're awesome. I need these in the winter. Gather up all of the curds from the bottom of the bowl. Oh. Oh. oh, no. And now just kind of fold it together in your hands. Wow. Ooh. Grab a nice. You want to grab about 75% of it in your dominant upper hand and stretch. Awesome. <laughs> so now 
I'll just fold it back into itself on the wow. way down. Wow. Get a nice good grip on it again. And give it another stretch. Oh. You want to make sure that when you pull it, you're not pulling it. You're just kind of letting pulling it fall it. out of your hand. If you break it, that's not great for the mozzarella. And give it a nice good stretch. Yes. Grab the weight of it. Perfect. Just like that. Oh no. Not yet. Oh, I'm not a professional stretcher, but I will be by the end of this. Pray. <laughs> not doing this well. It like breaks. <laughs> and it wasn't able to be stretched as no. much as it needed to be, but it was at this point it has been worked with to the point where it's it's <laughs> unable to be stretched any further. It's I'm a so tough. sad. It, it is on. tough. Oh no, I'm sorry. So go ahead and just fold it over itself. <laughs> this looks so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm not laughing at your comment. <laughs> I'm not laughing at your cheese. Oh, no. It looks great. So at this point, the goal, I am so sorry, <laughs> is for it to still have a little bit of malleability to it. So it kind of deflates on the plate like that. Um, yours, unfortunately, is going to be a little bit tough, but it will probably still be delicious. That's all that I care about. And it will be going much easier for you the next time. So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So for this, you can just go ahead and slice up the cheese. Is there a tough meat cheese? <laughs> I got the cheese. Yes. Perfect. And then you can go ahead and move the slices out of the way. After you cut them, that tends to help a little bit. Oh, mine doesn't just glide through. <laughs> so go ahead and plate your mozzarella. I don't know. It might be the ugliest, but I bet it's gonna taste the best. So there's that. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a new fan favorite. It's been a tough week. Mm, that was bad. That was that cheesy. Was tough. That was tough. That was tough. I don't even know where to put this. You got too much cheese. No such thing. So now you can go ahead and I think it looks beautiful. I agree. Thank you. Oh, no. Feel like you just want to make sure exactly oh. how we all feel. <laughs> so you just want to make sure that you get enough salt to cover all of the mozzarella. I will say I am left-handed, so um, so why I didn't think that one through. You choose your right hand. You have been using your right hand as your dominant hand. <laughs> when I like do things that aren't like eating or writing, I use my right hand, but I don't think that I should because I'm not good at any sports or anything. That's right. This is a right sport hand. for sure. Yeah. Maybe the next one we'll so do with do your left hand. <laughs> see how it goes. What I really appreciate is that she says the next one. Like yeah, they I haven't given up on me. You nation no, tries I'm doing sure. it with your left yeah. hand. Oh no, one of the cheeses were missed. What's this? The next we will do our venti del barone up near the basil. That is our olive oil. For that, again, you just want to make sure that all of the pieces get coated. Is there a technique with pouring or just go for it? Just go for it. Some of us do spirals, some of us just kind of perfect. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. So next we will do our balsamic vinegar. Oh, yeah. Ooh, there it is. Oh, wow. So it comes out slow. Oh, yeah. You are good. And so are you, Stephanie. Perfect. <gasps> yeah. So for mm. the finishing touch, you just want to pull apart your basil and add it to your caprese. Okay, that 
one's weird looking. Ta-da! And there you have it. Two beautiful mozzarella caprese. Yay! Wow. Congratulations, guys. You made we your did first it. batch of mozzarella. When do we start? <laughs> When's our first start day? <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not ready. <laughs> hey, where's your uniforms? I know, where's our apron? Could you imagine we like snap over in our uniforms? That'd be cool. Howard, can you edit those in? <laughs> Character. Character. We love that. Which one's your favorite? Oh, don't make him choose. It's okay, you can choose hers. I won't be offended. Well, I can't be offended because she does it just like I do my plates, which I think is oh. beautiful. But hers looks like it fell onto the plate naturally. <laughs> oh. so, I'm it's forward. effortless. <laughs> Exactly. It's just that, you know, on social media you see a lot of yeah. this. Instagram and we want to start seeing more versus of reality. This. Yeah. Oh, you're so fast. So cutting tomatoes. Where's that knife? It's not that bad. <laughs> the flavor is good. The texture is not. Mmm. Alright, switch. No. What? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> no. Fine. Well, you have to have a bag. I'm going from worst to best. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> The texture's a little weird, but it, honestly, it tastes good. That one's smoother. Mm-hmm. But, all right, let's try the pros. Mm. <laughs> I'm sad already. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that one's been sitting out the longest, and it's definitely still, still the, the smoothest one. <laughs> So you're definitely right, the flavor is phenomenal. The texture is a little off. It's a little bit. It's so off-putting. <laughs> it is very, <laughs> almost confusing. Almost confusing. It's off-putting and almost confusing. <laughs> but tastes delicious. Taste the taste is there. Yeah, the taste yes. is. The texture is definitely a new experience. That is so The taste funny. is exactly where it should be. Right. They should call it the Stephanie. Put that on the I menu. think people would buy that. <laughs> At least we know nothing is going to taste bad. Your seasoning was good. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, amazing on the flavor, and I agree the seasoning is perfect. Mm. The texture is just a little bit too tough. Just a tad. Yeah. I'm getting sent home after this episode, I know. Your texture though, with that mold and sea salt was fantastic. It was just off plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was delicious. I could absolutely eat that entire plate and enjoy it. It just is not what I'm used to. Things are looking up. Things I think are they're looking adding up. it to the menu. Yeah, it's called the Stephanie. All. Okay, everybody, so that was such a good time. That was I, so fun. Um, Kaylin and Connor were awesome, awesome people to do this with. So yeah. I'm very thankful for them. Um, if you do come to Roca, I would ask for them. A hundred percent. And you have to order the mozzarella cart. So that was Unation Tries making a mozzarella cart with Roca. If you guys want to see more Unation Tries videos, make sure that you click the subscribe button. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.